All right, well, starting up here in the top right-hand corner, we have Frozen as the pink... Or the light blue Zerg? Teal. Why did that look pink to me? Teal? All right, okay, whatever. And down here in the bottom left-hand corner, we have Dynasty as the pink Terran. Uh, I don't know how I got those colors mixed up. And we see that uh, Frozen, of course, has the awesome decal of that BlizzCon logo from 2011. Yeah, for those of you just tuning in, this is the SCL, the... S SE2 Clans uh, Championship League for Platinum and Diamond players. And Frozen is playing for Team Berserker B. Uh, or Berserker Team B. I, some combination of Berserker, the, the <laughs> letter B. Team and B. Yeah. It's all good. And then Dynasty is playing for EXE Firebat, uh, which is an awesome Brood War unit for those of you who played Brood War. So, yeah, we have a TVZ here on Core Hall Compound, one of the newer maps. Very excited to cast a game on this map today. What are your feelings about it, Boisterous? Well, actually, no, I just have a major issue with you saying that the Firebat was a good unit. The Firebat was not a good unit. I don't... Uh, and we have Dynasty going for a Proxy Rax, and that Proxy Rax is totally going to get scouted by this Overlord. Oh my gosh, wow, what a baller uh, Overlord. Uh, Firebats were awesome, thank you very much, but we'll, we'll just ignore that point. Yeah, All so right. this Proxy Rax is going to be very interesting. Um... Frozen's going to have to put down a spawn, uh, spawning pool here pretty shortly. It is going down. And then you'll probably put up a spine, cr spine crawler and he'll be just fine. Yeah. Um, honestly, I mean, you don't really need a spine crawler on one base. I mean, you can defend it with zerglings and drones. I guess it does help to have a spine crawler up. However, if you don't really want to damage your economy by dropping that 100 minerals on a drone, it doesn't. It's not really that dangerous unless the second proxy rex goes down. I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't keep an overload over there just to check. And it looks like Dynasty is actually going for two refineries after this. Yeah. So do you think this might just be a bit of like f almost fake pressure? or I don't I, know. Like, or at least not fully committed pressure? I guess I could see him building a reactor on it and then actually pumping it up, but I'm not sure. He's going to put a factory down. Because he knows it was down. scouted. Actually, is this just the scout racks? Yeah, he's going to put a factory down. He's going to be going for mech oh. play. Um this is actually really, really cool. Kind of fake a proxy racks to kind of psych your opponent out and then just transition into mech play. Um, very cool play by Dynasty. Kind of keeping the mind games up on his opponent. Here in game number one between Team Berserker B and EXE Firebat. Well, I think it's just a great play because you can transition out of it so early. Like, I'm sure that if that proxy racks didn't get scouted, he would have actually gone for proxy racks pressure. But then he saw the overlord and he was like, well, the proxy racks is kind of forfeit. I'm just going to use it as a scout and then go mech. So that's actually, that's actually really a kind of cool way to do that sort of proxy racks pressure is just be willing to give it up if it gets scouted. Yeah, and look at this, Dynasty putting down the uh, Supply Depot at a very, very good time. Also going to be lifting off and putting that Tech Lab on. And so these Zerglings won't be able to get up into the base. However, the one problem is he doesn't have any units at all. So he's really got to get that factory to finish and start pumping out Hellion so he can deal with this little Zergling pressure. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't actually make a Hellion or two before he even started that Tech Lab. Um... Because he's going to definitely need to use at least some money on repairing. And even then, he doesn't have an SCP to repair this left supply depot. And there it comes down. So this is just going to be extremely annoying for Dynasty. It's three SCVs that aren't mining for a while. And then these Zerglings are probably going to be able to escape unscathed from the onslaught of the Hellions, to be honest. Yeah, they'll be and just fine. Have, and we have the drone transfer from Frozen going down to his natural. So that's kind of like the real big thing that the Zerg player has again, has over his opponent at this point, is that he still has the map control until these Hellions actually hit the fields. Um, and that's that's pretty major, because his hatchery is unbelievably faster than his opponent's command center will be. Yeah, his economy is soaring right now. And one of the biggest problems I foresee is you really need two base if you're going to go mech as Terran, because mech is super gas-heavy. Um, so I, I'm interested to see what Dynasty is going to do. I foresee him getting, he is getting, uh, ignore, uh, the Hellion upgrade. The name totally slipped for some reason. Um, and yeah, I don't know. He's going to have to stay on Hellions for a while until he has two base. Yeah, he is. And, uh, that's actually kind of a danger against the Zerg player because then the Zerg can kind of just go roaches and if he can manage to get to his natural before anything actually major happens there, then he'll just win the game. 
uh, unless a couple siege tanks are out. And of course, if you go Hellions, you're not really pumping out siege tanks. It would appear that the Roachborn is f going down currently. Uh, Zergling Speed, of course, just finished up. And there's a lot of Hellions out here. Yeah, there's quite a bit of Hellions, and I don't... I don't know how I feel about the spine crawler placement. It's going to be pretty good at protecting those gas, uh, the, the drones protecting the gas. Um, but I don't know. They're going to be able to slip right into the base like they're doing and get a lot of drone kills. Like that? Yeah. I mean, he does have a spine crawler in the main base mineral line, but even that is not wonderfully placed. Uh, he did manage to get his infu or his inject larva off on that hatchery and blue flame finishes and that's kind of it's going to be kind of nasty for the drone line of course blue flame got nerfed right so that it's three hits instead of two yep. so that majorly decreases the amount of damage that these hellions are going to be able to do however it's still that was still quite a run they killed 14 drones 15 and i think they're going to finish there yeah finish at 15 but that's actually really really good as it helps him catch up a little bit economically because he's still very very far behind especially in gas uh, which is the main resource you need for max so I suspect this command center will go down and he will immediately be taking these double refineries um, actually no he's gonna be transitioning out of mech gonna be getting three barracks up uh, so just a kind of interesting double factory hellion pressure there are a lot cleaner ways to do that, I believe, um, and these Hellions are going to be intercepted by these Roaches, and actually, Dynasty's going to be in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be... Actually, yeah, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. He has no units. Yeah, and he's lifting his <laughs> command center. Uh, he's really going to need to start repairing these supply depots as the Roaches can kill them very, very quickly. And yeah, he only has one Hellion at this time, popping out a tank as well as Siege Mode. But these roaches could kill the tech lab before Siege even finishes, uh, unless he repairs. And these roaches have actually made quite a fatal blunder in that they didn't focus fire anything. Yeah, but they were able to kill all the SCVs, and so now he can just continue taking out stuff. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point, he can kind of just hit whatever he wants. Ooh, taking out the tech lab right before Siege is able to finish. He only has one tank. The tank is doing a nice job doing a lot of damage because these SCVs are keeping the roaches away from him. However, in this process, he's already lost 13 workers, uh, which can be very, very devastating to this Terran player. Yeah, he's down to 14 workers at this point. I mean, that is a severely crippled economy, uh, and he's actually going to go down 12 workers, and that's... That's in the danger zone for Terran. I mean, that's the spot where mules can no longer really make up for it. Yeah, and look at this. We have a bunch of Zerglings coming in, uh, actually deciding to turn around. But that could have been huge, too, because he only has the one Hellion and only one Siege tank as well without Siege mode. Also, Frozen doing a very good thing, just taking a third. So not only did he hit his opponent's economy hard, he started working on his own very hard, uh, droning up. He is at 52 workers, which is great for Zerg player. He's going to want to try to get up to that 60, 70 mark. And yeah, he, Frozen is doing a great job for Team Berserker B. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if Frozen's actually going to go for a Baneling bust at this point. I don't think it would be the wisest decision because honestly, that tech lab or that siege tank research should be finished before his centrifugal hooks finishes. Uh, although I guess he could. He did make these seven banelings kind of preemptively. Yeah, and Siege Mode hasn't actually even been started yet by our Terran player. So he does not have Siege Mode, and he will not have Siege Mode for a while until he realizes uh, that it was cancelled. Which could be huge. Um, you know, it, it makes a huge difference. Siege tanks can single-handedly stop baneling busts, but if you don't have that Siege Mode, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. I wonder if he actually hasn't realized that Siege Tank, that Siege Mode was finished. Uh, I guess it's possible, although at this point I think he would have tried to Siege his Siege Tanks in the front. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of times as a Terran player, you might be really, really focused on pumping out units that you don't think to Siege your Tanks in the front. You're just kind of going really quickly, but he did just now realize that it hadn't been started, and so he is getting that up. However, his opponent has been allowed to get quite a bit of roaches up, quite a bit of bamlings, and he's also working on uh, infest infestors, which his infestation pit just finished. And it looks like Dynasty actually wants to go for a no-siege mode pressure attack. 
This is going to be so Whoosh. devastating for him. Uh, this third base has two yeah. spine crawlers. There are a ton of roaches on the field. Zer uh, Baneling Speed has finished, and he will be attacking on creep. This is just so devastating for Dynasty. I don't know what his end game for this plan is, as this Zerg army is turning around and coming right at him. And even if he does snipe the thirds, he's still only on equal base, only on equal bases. And there goes his entire army. There's the GG and the GG. Yep. Wow. So. So that means that BSK Team B is going up 1-0 against EXE, and I really think that. That attack was literally just him going, oh shit, I forgot Siege Tank research. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, in the end, that Siege Tank hurt him. I think his pressure hurt him in the beginning. It was, it didn't, it did a lot of damage, but he didn't have anything at home to protect him, and he should have expanded behind it. So yeah, we'll have to see what EXE Firebat has for us in game number two, as Berserker did take this one. So see you guys in game number two.